Hello and welcome back to another video from Procedure Worlds. Today we're going to be discussing how to migrate your Gaia 1 scene to Gaia 2 slash Pro. So, without further ado, let's get started. And as you can see, we have our amazing game that we have created with Gaia 1. But now, we are wanting to migrate from Gaia 1 to Gaia 2 slash Pro. It's important to note that Gaia 2 and Gaia Pro are not directly upwards compatible, but it is possible to migrate scenes that were created with Gaia 1 into Gaia 2 slash Pro, so that you can continue your work on your train with the advanced tools of Gaia 2 slash Pro. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a backup of our project before beginning the migration process. The migration will require you to edit scenes, delete files, and work with the trains in general. It is very easy to create irreversible changes to your project that might destroy your hard work permanently. Do not take this risk and make a backup of your project so that you can easily restore it if anything should go wrong. So we're going to go to our file where we have saved our project. We're going to click copy and we're going to paste creating a copy of our project. Now that we have successfully made our backup, we're going to go back to our project. Now even though we are in 2018.1, this process should work on any Unity version. So the next step, it's important to note that Gaia 2 and Gaia Pro cannot be simply installed over Gaia 1. While some of the tools in the software follow the same principles, like the stamper and the spawner, they are very different on the inside and can therefore not be upgraded automatically. The same applies to general lighting and the water setup. The newer versions of Gaia contains a more complex setup for lighting and new water shaders which is structured differently in the scene hierarchy. The content like your assets, textures, trees, etc. between Gaia 1 and Gaia 2 is similar but Gaia Pro also contains a lot of additional assets and the biome presets that come with Gaia Pro. If you were to simply install Gaia 2 slash Pro over Gaia 1, you would run into the following issues. The installation files would be split up across the new Gaia Pro directory and the existing Gaia 1 directory, creating issues that make it difficult to tell the two applications apart. The existing Gaia 1 setup can create a lot of issues when interacting with the newer Gaia 2 slash Pro tools, and remaining code fragments of Gaia 1 can throw errors when the code of Gaia 2 slash Pro is present. Gaia 2 slash Pro requires a higher Unity version 2019.3 as Gaia 1. It is therefore absolutely not recommended to install Gaia 2 slash Pro over Gaia 1 as this can and will not work. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to prepare for the migration process to Gaia 2 slash Pro. We can start cleaning our assets folder. To prepare for the migration of Gaia 2 slash Pro, you should ideally delete the entirety of Gaia 1, but this can create problems if you're using asset content of Gaia 1, your textures, trees, models, etc. Those you cannot delete since you will still need them after the migration to display on the terrain. If you are not sure if this is the case, you need to inspect the terrain slash scene to see what assets it uses. You can check the following asset types in the Unity Terrain Inspector. Your terrain textures, your train trees and your train details. So we can look at our train here then go to the paint and see the textures. Same thing goes for the trees and the grass details and flowers. To be able to find the game objects we need to go to Gaia, coverage game object spawner and spawn game objects. This will show you your game objects on your terrain. The next step is we're going to need to create a folder and we're going to call this Gaia 1 Legacy. Now we're going to go to Gaia third party samplers and grab Motu this folder right here and drag this over 
to the Gaia 1 Legacies folder. And then we're going to go to Assets, Gaia Dependencies, Speed Tree, and drag this over to the Gaia 1 Legacy. And then we're going to grab our terrain and drag it over. Once you have identified which assets are being used in your Gaia terrain, you can decide which Gaia 1 asset folders you can delete. Since some of the folders are supplied by Gaia 2 and Gaia Pro as well, you can delete some of the folders even if you are using them. The same content will be supplied by Gaia 2 and Gaia Pro again, so use the following table to determine if you need to keep or delete a Gaia 1 assets folder. If a folder is not listed here, it's safe to assume that it contains files that would interfere with Gaia 2 slash Pro and therefore must be deleted. After you delete the folders, only the folders marked with keep and the table should remain in the asset hierarchy, third party, and of course your own assets. While you delete the files, you might see some of the assets on the train disappear. This is normal since the assets were just deleted from the project, but they will reappear once you import Gaia 2 or Gaia Pro. After you've went through these asset folders, delete any other Gaia folders in your project. So we're going to go ahead and delete Gaia. We're going to go ahead and collapse all of these and grab our spawned game objects and move them all the way to the bottom. Then we're going to open up Gaia Environment, grab our terrain, actually, go like this, grab our terrain and drag it all the way to the bottom. We're going to delete Gaia, delete Gaia Environment, and delete our camera. Now, the only thing that should remain is your spawned game objects in your terrain. Then we're going to go ahead and delete the Gaia dependencies. And then we're going to delete screenshots. And the only folders that should remain here is your Gaia 1 legacy and your scenes. After you have simplified your project, we're then going to save the scene. And then we are going to close out and restart our project. Now that we have reopened our project, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to upgrade to 2019.3. Gaia 2 slash Pro requires Unity version 2019.3 to work correctly. Since Gaia 1 still supports older versions of Unity as well, you might need to lift your project to a higher Unity version. This can be simply done by closing the editor and opening again in a higher Unity version. Doing so might take some time as Unity will re-import all assets to the new target version. So we're going to close, open up the Unity Hub. If you have not installed 2019.3, Go ahead and install it. You can go to add and pick one of the latest releases. Once it's installed, go back to projects, go to Unity version. Under the drop down, select Unity 2019.3. It does not matter which one you choose as long as it's one that's not in beta. And then open up your game again. This will say that you need to upgrade. Go ahead and confirm. And then click yes. And we are now in Unity version 2019.3.
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the assets tour. And then we're going to go to our version of Gaia. So either Gaia 2 or Gaia Pro. And then we are going to import Gaia 2 or Gaia Pro. Then we're going to go ahead and click import. And now that we have successfully imported the Gaia 2, we're going to go back to our scene view. And in the case that your grass is missing, you're going to go to terrain, paint details, and click refresh. And now you should see your grass again. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check post processing again. So we're going to go to Window, Package Manager, Post Processing. And it says we are up to date with 2019.3. Then we're going to go ahead and check our project settings and make sure that it says Post Processing SAC version 2. And then now we can start to set up our scene with Gaia 2 slash Pro. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, Procedure Worlds, Gaia, Show Gaia Manager. It says an update has been detected. Click OK. Once that is finished, it will bring up your Gaia Manager. It's important to note which version 2.1.4 is the latest release. Now we are going to go to scene settings, choose our camera, choose our skies, our post processing is enabled, we can choose our water, underwater effects, wind zone, wind type, ambient audio and screenshotter. And then we're going to create player, skies, water, wind and screenshotter. Click yes. And the last thing we're going to do is quick bake lighting. And now you have successfully migrated your Gaia 1 scene to Gaia 2 slash pro. Now if you wanted to edit the terrain, you can. You can go to the Gaia Manager, click on Advanced tab, go to Terrain Creation, and Show Stamper. For this to work properly, you need to go to Terrain, go to Settings, and turn on Draw Instance. Once that's turned on, you can go to the Stamper, and click stamps to bring up your stamps. We'll zoom out a bit. And then we will select our stamps and go through this process like normal. Say, I don't know, this, this mountain right here. Maybe bring this up a bit. We can add in a distance mask. Maybe turn this to global and then turn this one to global. And play with our strength transform to give it a more unique look. Something like this. And then we can go ahead and click stamp. And now we have used our stamper 
yet again. So, if you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe for future tutorials and updates and announcements. And we will see you on the next time. Thanks.